how do you keep the discus back throughout the throw? Right. Okay. And how, how often do you run into that with your, your coaching group? I, I mean, that's pretty frequent. And I think what, what ends up happening is like with all this stuff is that, you know, how do you keep the discus back? Well, one, it depends on where we're talking about, you know, is it the middle? Is it right out of the back? Throughout, um, throughout the coat. So this, through, I think, um, you, I see so many throwers lose it. In fact, I have a new video coming out. So, <laughs> and we talk about that um, because <laughs> we, because basically I'm going to, I'm going to, this is it. I'm going to share with you, Dane and Trevor. Okay. Because I'm, I'm a giver. <laughs> I'm a giver. So here's the, if, if uh, I'm a leader, <laughs> it's this, this is what nobody teaches in the throw. You got it. Everybody teaches, right? You put two fingers guys. See some people who say, Oh, that's a preference. I think that's bullshit. You got to keep your fingers together. And then when you angle the thumb and you're going to notice most guys angle the thumb because that creates drag. And that's obviously going to be, see that massive tricep. <laughs> you're going to, you're going to, uh, you're going to obviously just engage the tricep more when the thumbs here. And that's what you're going to see with most elite guys that don't have funky carries like Sam Mattis. Right. Right. right yeah. Who turned it over. Yeah. And that's that weird carry stuff that you learn. So if kids are learning to do this, so the answer I think is to, to learn how to keep the thumb, this little cock of the hand keeps the disc is here. It's also easier to kind of cradle it with your fingers and then it's easier to lock the discus back. And then so many kids are doing this. So they get into that carry. I call it carrying versus drag. Mm -hmm. You want to drag the discus. You don't want to carry the discus. And so many young kids are like, it feels like it's going to fall out. And they're holding the discus fingers apart, thumb up. And it's like the discus is going to fall. If you're just doing this, your fingers kind of do this under the discus and it becomes easier to carry. I don't know. That's what we do. Now, does that work every time? No. What, what you're saying too, if you think about it from a muscular perspective, is that you're, when your thumb is like down or flat the way Sam holds it, you're going to be using a little bit more upper trap. And when you, yeah. when you raise that thumb up the way you describe it, you're going to mm -hmm. actually be using a little bit more of your lower trap. And it's a little bit easier to retract your scat. Exactly. Mm -hmm. right. So it, the, the thing that I would say with Sam is like Sam's hand is like Alekna's left arm in the middle where he has that weird drop of his left arm and I just think that that's like something that wasn't addressed early on and, and it just yeah. goes back to what we're talking about is is this is stuff where you can see it and I, and I think the big picture issue is that that the high school kids that are tuning in need to recognize is that something like the left arm it might take six months to figure out how to use the left arm just because we're trying to get them to feel like a mini wrap where they hold the left arm and then when they feel that hold position, then they actually feel, okay, now I feel a hold. Now I can open it up. So it might take, yeah. you know, for some kids, it might take six months. Some kids, it might take two weeks. Right. For them to feel that delay of the left arm. But then when they feel that delay of the left arm, now all of a sudden they can be a little bit more active with it. And I think that all this stuff is progression-based. And if, if you're a thrower, you've got to understand that the discus being behind. So something that, that Eric just mentioned with the – you know, with the, with the way the palm is, is facing can be a fix, a very quick fix for a high school kid. But yeah. then when you get to somebody like Jason's level or Sam's level where maybe they feel like they're open or they, that they, they feel like there's not as much tension through the middle of the circle. It's going to be, okay, well maybe they're, they're, they're laid off the left leg. Maybe the left leg's not getting to the front as quickly as it typically would. And they're being a little bit lazy out of the back. And now the speed of the left leg, is making that more tension or, or lack of tension. And, and when they get more speed from the left leg, now the discus is back deeper mm -hmm. because the left side is moving faster. So it's like yeah. figuring out, well, what level are you? Are you throwing, you know, 138 feet or are you throwing 65 meters? Cause it's, it's different things. If you can think as a thrower, these progressions take years. And, and, and that's the thing with Jason is he's committed, you know, he's, you know, he's gone from 138 feet and he, he bought into that from a very early time frame that this takes time to develop and make <clears throat> forth at the Olympic trials because of that. Right. And I think that's one of the hardest things to coach is that I was just dealing with Sam outside being, you know, he was super frustrated and pissed, but I was like, dude, be patient, be patient, be patient, be patient. And then his last four throws, it was like murder, 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 murder. Right. And I think that this is like the, the ever going theme with throwing mm -hmm. is it's like, yeah. 
you, you yeah. trouble through all these positions and it's understanding like where are they at as an athlete, where are they at in the progression? And then how can you keep them patient so that they don't jump ship so that they don't lose their minds so that they yeah. aren't immature little babies. 